You mentioned molecular testing. What is the best way to describe what molecular testing is? So molecular testing is basically looking at the genomic fragments of the virus. So it's looking at the DNA or the RNA in this case of COVID-19. And that's what we call molecular testing. Antigen testing looks at a protein or a fragment of a protein of the virus. So it's testing for COVID-19, but it's using kind of a, a different type of platform, if you will. Okay, great. So you're testing two different things. Now, when people are doing these, um, these rapid tests, right, what kind of test is that? So the rapid test could be antigen test, uh, and then some of them are also molecular-based tests. And so when we talk about rapid, this could be, this means that you're having results anywhere from a few minutes, 15, 30, 45 minutes, to a couple of hours. But the big thing in the news is the saliva-based test. So you just basically have to spit in a test tube, but you still have to send it out to a laboratory to get analyzed. And that is where the bottleneck is, because it can take, you know, again, anywhere from days to weeks to get a test back. And what we know with COVID-19 is that we have a very short window in terms of when an individual is most infectious, right? Because the entire goal is to try to cut out the chains of transmission, try to make sure that more people don't get infected, because that obviously is what is propagating this pandemic. Okay, let's look at reliability real fast. So what do we look at as the most reliable of the tests? Someone says, I want to get the most reliable test. What do we tell them? The most reliable test, the golden standard, is a PCR test. And that's really what's being uh, used across the nation. Antigen tests are being used to, um, to some degree. But right now, um, PCR tests is it's being rolled out across the United States. And it's highly sensitive. It tells you with you know, very good confidence that you are either negative or positive. But as I mentioned early on, it, because it's so sensitive, it can't tell you whether you're actually actively infected or you've actually recovered. And, uh, and this is where the issue is. And that's why a number of public health officials, including myself, are stating that we're letting the enemy of perfect to be the enemy of good. And what that means is that if you're a doctor, we absolutely need to make sure that you know whether this person has COVID-19 or not. So we want a highly sensitive test that can tell you with high confidence, yes or no. But if we're using it for screening purposes, like I want to go see my grandma, I want to go to a party, I want to, you know, uh, see um, other people, go, or, you know, or do other things, go to school, we can rely on antigen tests that may not be as sensitive, but they can still detect a high percentage of people that are actively infected right now. So we want something that's fast, cheap, and reliable, and that can roll, that could be rolled out nationwide. Okay. So lastly, on this point, if you want to tell someone, you know, what do you tell your doctor? When you tell your doctor, I want to get what test? You want to tell your doctor you want to get the PCR test? What do you tell your doctor what test you want to get? So really the bottom line is PCR is the golden standard, but it's also case by case. You need to take the whole clinical picture into context. When you've been exposed, um, how long your symptoms have, uh, your onset of symptoms, or whether you're asymptomatic and when your last exposure date was. So those are some really key points of uh, questions that we would need to ask. Bottom line is be an informed consumer and know which type of COVID test you're taking. If you're concerned that you've been exposed and you do not want to expose others, you might be better off quarantining and waiting for a more accurate test result versus one that may be fast acting, but not as accurate. Dr. Madad, thank you so much. It's very complicated stuff. Thanks for helping us try to understand it. And we hope to talk to you again. Thank you for having me.